Welcome back to the NAO show, boys and girls. It is week four in review. That is Tank Top Mike. Don't let the gun scare you. He is as... He won't kill you, all right? I hello, won't let him. Hello. And that is Marky Mark with his... I can't believe you're willing to wear it. His Dallas Cowboys t-shirt. Oh, that was a burn for both of you. Ha! Welcome. How y'all doing? Uncool. Uncool. Shaking our heads, man. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm wearing this LSU Joe Burrow shirt. I don't know if anybody watching is going to take offense to it, but they can stick it straight in their black hole behind them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you gotta, gotta have some you gotta radio silence while he drinks a beer. <laughs> yes, you gotta stay hydrated. I was told that you have to stay hydrated. All sure. right, Marky Mark, let's get this show kicked off because we got a bunch of stuff to talk about. A lot of it to do with silly dilly still sucking. Shock, shock, shock. Hello, Anna, Marky Mark, kick it. All right, let's start with the scores as we always do. We're going to start with the DBs, 163, the Swirly Kings, 125. The DBs are on a roll, and tough luck for Dylan, who scored enough to beat five other managers this week, but he takes the L. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to start us off on this one? I think it's fun to look at uh, Dylan's lineup and see like the people that were supposed to be really good be really bad and the guys that aren't supposed to be really good do really well this week in name like besides Leonard Fournette and Tom Brady they actually had uh really good weeks this week and three bad weeks prior but uh the people I'm really looking at is like Higby had 12 and a half points and Connor only had nine points Connor was so touchdown dependent last year that it's hurting him this year. Everybody's expecting him to get 15 points a game, but he is not doing it. I think, you know, you talk about going off. This is the fourth or third week in a row that the uh, the DBs have been propped up by just a guy or two. So, you know, they're winning. They're 4-0. Congrats. Way to go. But, you know, 30, 36 points from Hawk, you know, like, Go back every week. Jackson, Lamar Jackson, he'll score 40, 45 points a week. What are you going to do when that doesn't happen? You're going to lose. That's what's going to happen. Oh, big yeah. words so. from Take Top Mike this week in the week four review. He's saying that the DBs <laughs> have been propped up. That's why they are 4-0. and Every When week, is that tumbling down? Every week they've had one player just absolutely go off, score 35-plus you know, plus points a game. You know what week they didn't have that happen? Week one. How many points they score? 111. That sucks. Dang. <laughs> that's subpar. That is not going to get it done this in most weeks. Dive. I got I got two weeks. I got two weeks of this pent-up shit. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw in the chat, but somebody had said that maybe Derrick Henry and CMC finally did something this week. Oh, congratulations. Week. Two of your running backs scored 20 points. Two of mine scored 30. Let's go to the next good team, huh? Whoa! <laughs> I love it. Let's go. Let's get it. Silly, I didn't, I, on, I, didn't, in on. I didn't look at Silly's team. It wasn't worth my time. I don't know what he did. <laughs> well, it's not worth any of our times, but we uh, try to give everybody a little shout out in this show, in the NAO show, even though that they're fucking straight trash. Let's go to the next one, Marky Mark. Mark, Mark just didn't get anything in on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid to say anything now, man. I, just, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it's kind of mean. Mike, you got riled up. We're riled, running with fire tonight. Let's do it. Guys are being really mean, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just well. We, well, we talked about it before the show. That they, They're in chat. They're they're talking themselves up. You yeah, talk a big yeah, game. Yeah. You, you get it. Yeah, dish it out. You got to take it, right? It, 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 the fucking tips or something like that and then all hell breaks loose yeah it is a shame for dylan man he had his best week and uh still came up empty man so it's just gonna just be not good enough playing story that, of his <laughs> playing that top five schedule man that's gonna be tough for him so he was he was the most uh efficient manager it was like 98 percent perfect lineup so yeah yeah so he, he can't get any better that's sad 
<laughs> he got a nice day from Brady. And he, and he had six other guys in double digits, but it just was there wasn't any smash guy like they had with Hawkinson. So it's um it definitely he definitely needed something like that to put him over the top. Well, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say Hawkinson, Derrick Henry, and CMC. You're welcome, Evan. Don't come to me in my DMs. All right, we're gonna move on to the <laughs> ass waxing of the week. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> and this one pains me, but it's the Pooh Crew 142, the Who's Your Daddy's 99. So I said last week I needed to make a statement. You made a statement there, Primo. I don't know if it was a good one. Yeah, that statement is that I suck. Mike, want to start us off on this one, buddy? Yeah, this one, this one was tough. Um, there's a lot of a lot of red underperformers on your side, and you know, on, this is normally I would say this is a week you, you chalk it up, you throw it away, you move on. You know, your 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 team is better than this, and we all know it. You got ranked fairly high in all of our preseason rankings. Um, I know normally I would say that the only unfortunate thing obviously is uh, Javante Williams. Yeah. That's a crushing blow. You hate to bring it up, but yeah, that's a, it, that was tough. To there say. is a golden lining to that cloud though, Mike. He doesn't have to make the choice if he needs to start him or not. He already made the choice. <laughs> yeah. I guess he just put Melvin Gordon in for the rest of the season and hope he doesn't fumble, I guess, but. Kazaa. Yeah. I think the real question is, what the hell are you going to do with Terry McLaurin? Well, he's actually had decent weeks every other week, but this one, I mean, he's been in, he's been in double digits and finished like as a, you know, low end two, high end three, so not not horrible, but uh, this was a real bad game for him. And hey, I, 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 I almost sat him because I thought Diggs is going to be probably paying a lot of attention to him, and and Diggs has been good, you know. I, I was thinking, well, maybe Diggs will have that one mistake and he'll get one long play on him or something, you know, because Diggs is very aggressive and sometimes that translates into a big play against him. But uh, Diggs did a good job shutting him down this past week, so it just didn't happen. But he, he hasn't been horrible. He just hasn't hasn't been uh, hasn't been great either. Not with, with Samuel stepping up, you know, Dotson stepping up. There's a lot more competition there now for some targets. Speaking of being fucking propped the fuck up, who crew over here has five guys just carrying him. The rest of them are just dookie, just straight dookie. <laughs> well, you know, he, he had down days out of uh, JT. Um, Cook only had 9.6, but then Saquon gets 17. Uh, Kelsey and DK had good days. And DK, he's been, you know, he hasn't been great, but he, he finally had a, a really nice day. That helped carry him. So, he well, got he's been man. what he thought he would be. I thought he'd be like wide receiver five all year, but last two weeks he's had uh, fourteen point nine last week, and then he had eighteen point four without a touchdown. So that means he was putting up a lot of yards. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And I heard and uh, it, an interesting set about Barkley is it's the lowest scoring RB one in like the last bunch of years. Yeah. It's been a weird year for our yeah. RB right now. Running I mean, Eckler, Eckler's been Eckler's been kind of kind of down for you know for Eckler standards, but that big week last week put him at RB three. Yeah, and you know if you say hey you know how's Eckler doing this year, most people say, ah eh, he's he's been okay, but man he's you know it's really been one game, and so like kind of what we're seeing a little boomer bust going on with some of these guys. Man, uh, Marky Mark just kicking tanked up. Mike and the nuts right here on the show. This is what you get when you come uh, it's watch a, the show here, dude. It's I mean it's I'm just saying stating the facts. Yeah. He's they've been committing the hell out of that thing. You know, you know Sony's been getting carries and and uh, they've been mixing in Kelly. So they've definitely spread it around. But he finally had a he finally had a Eckler kind of day. You know the kind of day he was having last year pretty consistently. So. Hey, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say I don't like it. I love the animosity towards each other and towards other people. And let's continue <laughs> this. All right. Yeah. Yeah, the Javante thing hurt, um, but you know it was more than that. I just uh, my I underperformed. My scoring is is down from last year, so I definitely. I, 
I'm I have a better record now than I had this time last year, but I don't feel as good about my team as I did last year, which is really weird to say. So I think uh, some of that also knowing the teams above you are pretty damn solid. There are yeah, like five yeah. teams I like this. Like I say all the time, this league is so freaking competitive. There's like seven teams in this league that could. I wouldn't be shocked if one if they won the fucking whole thing after a bomb wins the championship with <laughs> Rex Barrios and Rex Barrios. Yeah, I'm, still, I'm I'm not over it. <laughs> yeah, Javante thing hurt, I, and I lost. Uh, you know, I lost um, Mitchell in the first game. Um, same kind of kind of the same point total, like three points and then out. You know. So uh, that's that's going to be tough for me moving forward, man. That was my top two running backs. Um, you know, Zeke, I kind of counted him as the number three behind Elliott and, uh, or I'm sorry, but behind Mitchell and uh, Javante. So now my number three is my number one. So gonna be gonna be rough sledding, but we'll see. Maybe I can get a trade in. We allow. All right, trade? let's move on. We can trade during the season. What's that? We can trade during the season. I thought I, we only did that during the off season. Oh yeah, man. Wait, we didn't do it the off season either, so I, I'm so confused on when we're supposed to be able to trade. Commissioner, can you uh, highlight that for us, please? Maybe that's it. Uh, trades are down, and I was wondering about it. Maybe I needed to tell everybody it's okay. <laughs> I've heard yeah. I've heard it's okay to pick people off the w- waiver wire on Sunday. So yeah, because yeah, they're unlocked. You know, the players are unlocked, and uh, it's mm-hmm. it's wide open. Good day to do it, man. Get him, get him twice. <laughs> Same guy. Get him, get him before they go off. There you go. And then you don't even put a waiver claim in for him on the actual day you're supposed to. That's the best part. <laughs> well, maybe the freaking thing shouldn't give it to me. Yeah. Still don't know what the hell happened there. I guess probably because he was he was on nobody's radar just to play. <laughs> they didn't even bother doing anything with his status, right? <laughs> like Zappy. They oh, yeah. Yeah. NFL, like, oh, he's on the practice squad. Yeah, you can probably, just move up. You know, go yeah, ahead. They probably thought he was on the practice squad inactive. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Score number three here. We've got Tink Top Mike 136, FNG 114. Mike, it must be nice to have a goose egg and still have the third highest score. Yeah, I want to start us off on your matchup. I started out real slow. I was a little nervous. My morning games were not looking great. Um, but you know, I got, like you said, Eckler. You know, talk about being propped up by some guys. I'll, I'll, I'll take the L on that one for sure. You know, Eckler and uh, and Jacobs really uh, came Jacobs. through for me there later in the day. So, but uh, you know, I was uh, I was pretty pleasantly surprised with uh, Khalil Herbert too. You know, no touchdowns, only ten and a half points. But man, the guy can take a running back one workload. So, I'm yeah. excited for him. Yeah, anytime you score 10 points and not, don't have a touchdown, that's a pretty good solid base to build off of. I think, I uh, think uh, FNG's got to be pretty happy with uh, Miles Sanders' output week. Two touchdowns, I think. I mean, not to be really, really mean to FNG, but I think 115, 120 points is probably over-projecting, over-achieving for his lineup, you know. And and to be honest, slow too. Like he could have done yeah. more. Because James Robinson didn't do as well as he has been doing, and he could have freaking went big, and he could have scored over 120 points. Yeah, he went with the former Ram over the current Ram. Goff got him 33.22 points. He talked about Sanders with that big day, but then he had just a lot of single-digit guys. He had some guys underperform, so he he had the smash guys, but just not enough to to complement it. You know, he needed. He needed more double-digit guys in the day, or uh, you know, otherwise he may have given Mike a run for his money there. But uh... well, I think both of these teams could are going to see better days ahead. I mean, how often is Stephon Diggs only going to get eight point two points? I think Amari Cooper is going to be well over a point and a half weekly, week in, week out, uh, which is kind of a letdown because they're playing <laughs> fucking Atlanta. <laughs> What I say, <laughs> busted. <laughs> Michael's just shaking his head while you're talking about Cup or uh, Cooper. I'm sorry, while you're talking uh, about Mari Cooper. <laughs> get a point and a half. Come on, he's gonna do better than that. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, big days by Jacobs. Now, Mike, do, do you think if uh, if you had Swift in there, of course you probably you probably start um, Herbert because you don't have Swift. Do you, would you have started Jacobs against a really good Denver defense? You know, up up until that point, do you think he would have been in your lineup if if you'd had Swift? I think the answer to this yes, because he would have taken Claypool's position and it would have been nights out. Yeah, it was that second. Well, it was Kamara. I think was the tough one because Kamara was he was playing until Saturday night. So Sunday morning, I woke up and Kamara yeah. was out. So that's when, and I knew that he might not play. But I think Kamara going out was Herbert going in. I'm pre- I think Jacobs was in first, and then Herbert. Okay. Okay. I think thank I you, remember. thank you, Mike. You sounded a lot like Sean there at first, uh, answering that question. But appreciate <laughs> you chiming in there for me. Uh, I'm not you got it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny you mentioned Kamara, man. The the West Coast guys were were singing the blues because mm-hmm. the announcement for them was what like five in the morning, <laughs> six in the morning, or something. I don't know. I think it I wasn't that early, but I mean, yeah, I mean. What what the the inactives were would be what like eight o'clock so that's five mm-hmm. o'clock uh, West Coast time, yeah man they, those guys were waking up and you know rubbing the sleep out of their eyes like what <laughs> that's the only downside of being on the West Coast if you got a nine o'clock game a London game for fantasy yeah. football you better be setting a freaking alarm mm-hmm. yeah I don't I don't think I'd sleep well if I had a questionable guy in there you know for the nine thirty game I'd be like ah let me. Make sure you put them in flex anyway, right? <laughs> nah, but that wouldn't that wouldn't that wouldn't work either. That wouldn't work either. That's if he starts it, you wouldn't be able to put anybody else in. Able, but yeah, yeah. There's no way around it, man. There's no way around it. Mm-hmm. Just don't... Yeah, I'll teach you how to manage your lineup. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, that's probably yeah, part cool. of my problem. Maybe that's why my scoring's down this year. Maybe you can get your head out of your ass. I don't understand, understand the points. finer points of how to set a lineup. Anyway, yeah. moving on. Moving on. Go to our next score here. We had a close one here. Goofy Epping Jace, 118. The A-Bombers, 113. Kind of, you know, relatively low scoring between two of the top five teams there. Uh, Sean, what do you what do you think here? To be honest, uh, besides my own lineup, of course, this was the other uh, matchup I was looking at quite a bit. Both these guys are ahead of me in the standings. I needed both of them to big, get a big old loss, but the likelihood of a tie is less than ideal. So I was trying to keep an eye on who's going to win this game. And to be honest, I'm shocked that it was this close because Hurts has been on fire all year long, and he only scored 15 points. If he scored as what he's been doing, this game would have been a blowout. Well, not so much a blowout, but definitely more towards the goofy side. I think Goofy right now is playing with house money. He has a bunch of old guys besides a couple of his players, and he's getting real, real good fantasy points from people of the, like, Alan Lazard. Who the hell knew that he was going to be anything? Like, if you told me that you knew who a good wide receiver in Green Bay before the season started, I would have called you a liar, and I would have been right because nobody knew who was going to get the ball. And Romeo Dubs is on the way up right now, so does that mean Lazard stays at the same production? Or does he go down where Aaron Rodgers likes to hone in on one wide receiver? Uh, it'll be interested moving forward. Uh, also, for uh, Abom, he got uh, Mike Evans back, who he sold a ship and a freaking hooker for. So <laughs> he got 26 points from him. That's pretty good production from a guy that just came off of suspension. So he's got to be pretty happy with a couple guys coming out. And Darush, Darush, however the fuck you say his last name, he came back down from the moon and had a game what he was supposed to have. I was surprised to see uh, Dorch or whatever we're calling him in the lineup. (laughs) Because Rondell Moore came back, took all the snaps. Had negative uh, air yards again and uh, took all the snaps. <laughs> yeah, that that definitely, I, I and I I thought I thought that could happen. I didn't think I thought Dorch was doing the Rondell uh, role. And Dude, 
But then when Rondell came back, it was going to be his role. You know, he was going to actually play himself. Not with himself. He was going to play himself. So. Mike, have you ever gotten a shipment of Hooker? I just I yeah, I know. Uh, Mike trade talks have not been going well, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> you're not getting hookers given to you, man. What are you doing in these <laughs> trade talks? Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, Sean. If you can give me a bomb's number, I'd like to just call him after this and uh, see what I can work out. But I want to know what a friendly uh, house deal. Like he was going to throw one in, you know. I want to know what the underdogs you know, are doing with the hookers. That Mark <laughs> Andrews. <laughs> Mike was trying to talk about give it, give it a chance. Oh, okay. Oh, I was just saying, yeah. I want, I want to know what the DBs are doing with the hooker they got from that deal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they know what to do with it. That's what I'm saying, man. Let's just, let's get them in the right place, man. You know. I was gonna say, I'm pretty shocked to see that Mark Andrews only had freaking two and a half points. Usually, his base is at least eight. Yeah, it was it was a rainy day, man. It was, uh, you know, L- Lamar had a down day. Nobody really had a great day there. Um, I, I guess Jake the, Dobbins did. A couple of the guys, couple, yeah, all you know, Dobbins, yeah. But it, you know, it was like a few big plays, you know, and then and then everybody else kind of was, was pretty average, man. Nobody nobody really did a lot in this game. Allen did okay, you know, Josh Allen did okay, but uh, they were playing from behind, and he he had to rush the ball a lot, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was just I, I watched that game. It was pretty pretty nasty. It was it was uh, tough for people to to do their normal things. So a lot of the it was a lot of big plays that helped a lot of guys, and you know the rest of it was pretty blah. So Andrews, yeah, he definitely definitely had a down day, and that's been a big part of a bomb success. So yeah, that he came down to earth big time. I mean, that's more like the rest of us have been seeing from our tight ends, you know. <laughs> Yes, two point five, man. That would have been good for me a day or two. Yeah, you know, it's a, a pretty good day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that, man. <laughs> All right. Jokey's got to be pretty happy with uh, Alec Pierce coming from an injury, having a slow week in Week Three against Kansas City, and he came out against Tennessee and had ten points from him. That's a pretty cool, uh, pretty good little depth piece he's got going on there. That might come back and help him out later in the season. That was an under the radar one there. Um, you know, I, I, I noticed that too, that he, he got some good targets and good production. And I, you know, I think he's been, what do you have? I think he had a concussion or he was out, he was out and had some issues, but uh, earlier in the season. Yeah. 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 So maybe, maybe he's back in there and hundred percent and we'll start seeing a little bit of something from him. I think he's, I think he's a good, he's kind of a Matt Ryan type of guy, I think. So uh, I think, I think uh, if they're going to concentrate on Pittman a lot, I think Pierce could maybe do a little something. It'd be interesting to see. I got a question for the the panel. How many more weeks does Friar Muth need to put up 12 points before he uh, makes it into the lineup over Waller, the baller? And starting two tight ends, it's, that's, that's the way to go. <laughs> That's what you've heard. That's the word on the street, Jake Top. Yes, yeah, it's, well, it's already... you better than Russell Gage. Yeah, he made a big trade for him. Uh, was that? that was a draft day trade, wasn't it? When he got Waller, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, hasn't uh, hasn't really panned out for him. But yeah, it's kind of odd that Las Vegas was kind of. Uh, one of the one of the preseason favorites of a lot of people, and they're just not living up to the hype at all, man. So, and you you would think with Adams and Waller in there that one of those guys is going to go off, you know, concentrate on one and will burn you with the other. I don't really know. Yeah, what's, maybe they're too. maybe they're struggling to get get that new offense um, from McDaniel's going, but yeah, it's kind of kind of weird. It's just not not great there right now, unfortunately. All right, let's move on. We're going to do the last score, and that is the Prince, 134, just the tips, 86. So the tips had a few overachievers, but they had a, a whole lot a whole lot more underachievers, I think. Let's talk about tight ends here. <laughs> yeah, 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 speaking of tight ends. So, Sean, you also put up a great total despite a goose egg, so tell us about this one, man. 
I just want to say thank you to the San Francisco 49ers defense. Totally putting a smack down on the Rams offense for me for 21 points because they made up the difference in, of two flex spots for me, which was real nice. But uh, Yeah, I totally agree. I was propped up by my rookie Damian Pierce. And I don't know if you can say I was propped up by Justin Jefferson for only getting 26 points. I think if he goes over 30 points, you can say that. But you pretty much expect 20 plus from Jefferson. But other than that, I haven't. I didn't have very good day. I didn't have very good day. <laughs> yeah, I think looking back, at, you know, uh, FNG has to be looking at that uh, Olave trade again, and you know, is he second guessing that thing? Because I mean, sure, there's a lot of guys out for uh, the Saints on offense that week, but, I mean, he's looked solid every other week as well. I think there's been weeks he's been the highest-graded rookie receiver of the, of the week and, you know, looking pretty solid. So, you know, that's got to sting just a little bit looking back on for <laughs> Just a scotch. Yeah, I, I, I think I would have held on to Olave. Maybe he'll stop being so enamored by picks. When we dangle the, <laughs> that little carrot in front of him, you know. But, yeah, Lobby Man would be nice on his. You know, London's been pretty good. It, it didn't do well for him this week, but London's been looking good. And, you know, imagine having a Lobby in London in there. And, um, you know, he's he's got some other good pieces there. Um, yeah. But, anyway, I'm not. we're not talking about I FNG. I should be uh, pretty happy with uh, Romeo Dubs' output as of late. I mean, yeah, he did have the fumble, but he still scored over 10 points, and that's pretty darn good for a rookie wide receiver getting mm -hmm. into the uh, realm with A-Rod there. You know, I think I think doing anything with Rodgers is going to be difficult, and it's going to take time. So for him to start hitting early like this, because I was thinking maybe like week six, week seven, we'd start seeing who the wide receiver is in Green Bay is. But uh, Romeo Dubs has been taking a pretty – Big step forward, and you can tell that uh, Rogers trusts him. He threw it to him eight times. That's he know Rogers knows exactly who's getting the ball and how many times he's throwing the ball to him. So the fact that he got eight targets says a lot. Yeah, when you mentioned Lazard, you know I think um, Lazard is probably more red zone end zone kind of guy. I think he can trust him. He knows him. He can do. Um, similar, you know, he's a big guy, possession guy. He can do things similar to what Devontae did inside the 20. Uh, but, I, you know, in between the 20s, I think Dubs is, is kind of the guy. Mm -hmm. I think Watson will get more involved. You know, they they he was a higher draft pick. They're going to want to get him involved. But Dubs is just getting it done, man. So, you know, Rodgers is all about what have you done for me lately. And Dubs mm -hmm. is doing, doing some things, you know. I, think I, I love that they put uh, – Hurst in the flex and got 10.2 from him, you know? <laughs> you know, it's a desperate time when you're flexing in a tight end, you know? But, like, what uh, were you saying about uh, starting two tight ends? I told yeah. you. Like, that's what there you it is do. right there. There it is. They're going to run into some tight end issues here. If, if Pitts, you know, has a hamstring issue that lingers a bit, so. Yeah, but. yeah. Yeah, it looks like Hurst could be a good guy to put in there. Yeah, Deshaun, I, I love that your, your rookies are doing it, man. Pierce and Olave, you know, we... We've got him in the se in the secret league, but uh, we don't have as much other firepower as you have, you know. So these are good compliments to your already decent roster, and you know. But I, I love it, man. Pierce putting up twenty two point nine second second week in a row um, that he's he's had a good game, and then the lobby man, he's just yeah, he's the lobby's just he's we still haven't seen what a lobby can do. He's gonna have a really big game here before too long when they when they put it all together because the air yards have been there <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> yeah the air yards have been there the targets are there and when it all comes together in one game he's going to be going for 30 for sure man so let's go i'm ready for it yeah. next week would be real nice let me tell you <laughs> well that 86 pretty much tells us who the miyagi goes to this week just the tips just say it. Oh. Winner of the esteemed Miyagi Award. I think it's their second time. So they've got a hit rate of 50%, man. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. If you're going to be good at something, you might as well be good at getting the Miyagi Award. 
Well, you guys are going to love this. I have an actual statement from the co-owner, Landon Tips. Great. Are you telling me all the original statements weren't from the managers? Uh, Lies in the NAO show. That's, Lies. That's on a need-to-know basis, and uh, you don't need to know that. But <laughs> I have a, I have a bona fide statement from Landon. So it's a mouthful. I'm gonna do my best here. Okay. Shocker. Landon says something that's a mouthful. Yeah. All right. It says. The Prince's powerful players publicly and painfully pulverized the tips' piss poor poppers. Uh, I agree with all that statement. <laughs> he says, I'm feeling significantly shameful that Sucky Sean still successfully shellacked us. Shellacked? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. So there you go. That's pretty all impressive, right. actually. What's that? Oh, that's impressive. I'll give him some props for that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I me, me too. <laughs> me too. It didn't even take him that long to come up with it, man. I was like, hey, man, you want to you want to make a little statement? You know, I don't. I think. Well, he's had the schedule for a long time, so he's had a good amount of time to figure out that he was going to lose this week. So he had <laughs> enough prep time for that sort of thing. Uh, words from Sucky Sean. Thank you very much. Fuck <laughs> <So, laughs> you, do. Hey, I'm just saying what he said, man. Sucky Sean says it right here. Moving <laughs> on. Got it right on my paper. So, thanks, Tom Mike. You want to run down the standings? We're four games in, so it's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, we're uh, starting it. Uh, four games in. Game. We have one team that's four and zero. Unfortunately, we also have a team that's zero and four. So, <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. You know, I'm looking at them. I want to give us a little bit of some props. You know. Well, our preseason rankings that we did are pretty damn close to what the ranking or the standings are right now. Yeah, yeah. We got the, the underdogs in and me at the top three. Um, unfortunately, I think the biggest deviation is unfortunately you, Mark. You were pretty high yeah. in, in the rankings, but some of those early losses, which is how you enjoy starting seasons. So, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but we nailed. I love some drama. We nailed the, the rankings. You know, we really did. We all kind of expected F and G, the tips, and Silly down at the bottom. They're bringing up the rear, and that's okay. And they can stay there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, like Sean pointed out, we're, we're, uh, we're going to have a big fight again in the middle of these rankings. We got three or three teams at three and one, two teams at two and two, and we got a long way to go. So yeah. keep an eye on your points four, you know. Why does it always have to come down to points four in this fucking league? Can we just go by the freaking record one time? Can't do it. You can't do it. Well, we talked before. You know, there's no trades to talk about today. You know, activity's been down. I, I had a, I had a few, uh, I had a few inquiries, but they didn't really get too far. Have you guys had much going on? It's, it's, it's been really quiet, man. Normally, we're all over it. You know. It's maybe I think a the last time early. I got a trade talk uh, was after week one, before week two, and it was a doozy, let me tell you. Uh, but it didn't get over the line for some reason, Brandon. And uh, so after, since then, I haven't gotten anything. And it's all, all quiet on my end, too, actually. I, I think I'm getting stuff because I'm, you know, I am underperforming and um, not scoring like I was last year, so not even... You know, last year I could say, well, hey, you know, a couple of wins and I and with my points four, I'm going to jump right back up there. But now I'm like, damn, man, I got a lot of points to make up too, you know. I think maybe people are looking at me and saying, eh, maybe he's ready to burn it down. You know, lost his top two running backs. So, you know. Well, I forgot to ask you, uh, Marky Mark, uh, is it time to burn it down? Is it time to go into rebuild? Better this, better, uh, Better this year than I was last year, and I didn't burn it down. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay put. I, I still believe in my guys. I still think I got some guys that uh, they're gonna, they're gonna start performing to, to the level that I thought they would when you know people that I traded for or made moves on. So, but I'm, I'm hanging in there, man. I'm hanging in there. I've got some All good right. players that are underperforming too. No touchdowns. Getting a couple, you know, you get early injuries like that, and you're going to get losses. So, but uh, 
We'll, we'll hang in there, man. All right. I'll make it interesting, man. If I, if I burn it down, then I can't ruin people's seasons at the end. So, <laughs> <You know. laughs> if I don't get in, I want to make, I want to get somebody else out of it. You know. That's what she said. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's go on to the matchups for this week. We'll start as always with the Marquee Mark matchup. <clears throat> that is the Prince versus the Pooh Crew. It's so, time. Yeah. So, Sean, I couldn't make a statement last week. Maybe you can make one for the both of us. All right. I don't want anything to do with anything that you think is a statement after week four. So, thanks. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, going into this week, I think there's an actual chance that I might make this a little sad for the Pooh crew, maybe. I've never beaten this douche nugget yet, but I think this week is my week. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor goes out early. Thank you. Uh, Higgins is probably going to play. He's questionable right now, but he's going to play. Uh the only one I'm actually looking at is Amon Ross St. Brown. He's kind of a big question mark. There is, n It's not a, uh, oh, he's just a veteran guy. We're trying to protect him. I think he's actually really hurt, and they're trying to figure out if he's actually going to play. So we'll see what happens with him. But looking over on my uh, squad, I'm, go I'm playing the floor this week. I'm playing three running backs instead of my wide receiver, uh, my five wide receivers. CEH is going to be in there. Uh, Pierce, you got to throw him in there. He's been fire right now. Mixon, I got to play for the upside. And then uh, I'm going with my uh, my A squad with the wide receivers with Jerry Judy as a topper. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping I get a point from my tight end position. Just one point would be fantastic. It'd be a real upside from the last few weeks. That's a tough ask, but... Oh, I know, that's what... <laughs> Go allow it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, like I said, what do you all these, think? One of these weeks, your team is just going to hit all at once. That's your, that's what your team is designed to do. Um, and when it happens, you know, it's it happens big. So if it's this week, that'd be pretty cool. That'll make chat fun for a week, at least. So yes, it would. <laughs> I might have to take some vacation just so I can really dedicate my time for the chat. <laughs> That's interesting that you picked up Disley and got him right in there. I guess you're going for that touchdown upside. You know, if you look at his, the numbers aren't great. Touchdown um, upside. Uh, my tight end position for the last three weeks has scored three points for three yeah, weeks in a row. So if he plays and catches upside. one catch, that is, that's upside right there. Yeah. I wish it was a better matchup for you there with Disley. You know, New Orleans has got a good defense there, but uh, he's definitely getting the looks in the red zone end zone area so um i you know he's one of those guys that could be he could have a tungan year where he gets the 10 touchdowns he doesn't do much else but he gets the 10 touchdowns and he kind of makes your makes your week by just getting in the end zone you know um i like your i like your matchups with uh, Mixon and burrow against baltimore they've got a lot of injuries on defense and been giving up a lot uh jj versus chicago you know that it looks like a great matchup. Some, you know, I, I guess the only thing that concerns me about Chicago is they run the ball so much and they're they're shortening the games. Um, mm -hmm. So JJ's going to have to make some hay early on in that one. Um, a lobby versus Seattle is a good matchup for you. Uh, you do have Waddle with the groin; yeah, it's been kind of lingering. So I, I think he'll probably play, but I'm I'm starting to wonder. You know, we we we're rocking him in the secret league there, and I just you know I kind of wonder is he is he 100 percent or is he kind of is he in there playing and maybe should rest it a little bit? But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I also I'm taking that into consideration. I'm also taking into consideration is his production dependent upon Tua being in there? Uh, yeah. When yeah. Teddy Two Gloves went in there, it was all hill all day. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I think Teddy had the reputation for not going downfield, but looked like he was looking to launch that thing to a hill a lot, you know. So. And maybe Mike, and Mike Gisecki, they got a good maybe, matchup against maybe Mike Jacecki too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're Mike asking Gisecki. a lot to take that Mike, but I'll allow it. 
Hey man, we'll we'll all light a candle for Mike Kosicki for you, man. <laughs> we'll all say a prayer on Saturday night and hope for the best on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do the whole thing, man. <laughs> yeah, can we can we give Mike something, please? Yeah, looking on a Poo Crew side, he's got uh, good matchups with Cook going against Chicago. It, you know, if they do make it a running affair, then Cook could maybe do a little something. Although that he's not looking to his best, man. That shoulder, I think, is bothering him more than he's letting on. Uh, he does have Debo against Carolina, which is a nice matchup. But as you mentioned, Sean, JT's out. Um, Amon Ra, I, I doubt he'll play. I agree. I think Higgins will. I think Higgins will play. Will he be 100%? Um, Kelsey the thing Brooks about Park. playing is if he catches the ball, 99% chance is coming from Joe Burrow, and that kind of negates the points, unless they do some crazy shit where uh, Chase throws him a touchdown, which could happen, I guess. But uh, 99% chance that Higgins is catching footballs from Joe Burrow, and that kind of negates each. Sure could use a chase day, though. <laughs> Me sure too. Let's go. I'm yeah. okay with it. You're, you're all for a chase day this week, I know. Let's uh, get it going. He does have Kelsey going up against Las Vegas, and Kelsey's been pretty much on. I, he, he's been a little up and down, but I think they're starting to see that that's their best. He's their best option. So, yeah, you know, unless – Las Vegas does something to try to shut him down, then he's probably gonna he's probably gonna put up another big day. So that's that's definitely in, in Puku's favor there. All right, let's move on to the next matchup we have. have to add to that, uh, Mark and Mark, before we move on, uh, I think we can't underlook the DK Metcalf being shadowed by uh, Marshawn Lattimore in New Orleans. I think that's gonna be a considerable testing stone for Geno. Uh, if if Metcalf gets some good points against Lattimore, it's going to be because he's gotten some good balls thrown to him. And I think that's going to be a good uh, testing for Metcalf moving forward. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Next we got Goofy Effing Jace. Going up against the Swirly Kings. Does Dylan get his first win this week? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think his luck is oh, oh, reversed. Oh, wait, you're actually asking a question? I thought it was a joke. I was just laughing. Yeah, I think his luck's reversed. I think everything he used up last year is uh, is gone. So, I mean, Brady coming out, he's probably injured. He's getting divorced. What's he even doing? You know, who knows? And then, what do you Last thing I heard, AB stole his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Um, but, you know, I, I think that these two teams had switched. I think Goofy's got all the, the early season luck. I'm going to give it to him again this week. How many more losses do Silly Dilly the Swirly King need to get before he starts burning down his shit team? I, he already He already did that. You you don't think he can do it anymore? Maybe not. It's hard Maybe to not. burn burn in this town. We can burn. How oh. many fourth round picks would it take to get you to take <laughs> feeling from him? <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, there's not much going on here on that side to burn down. Goofy, if you don't beat him by fifty, you did some you did yourself a disservice. I think if I'm silly, I'm putting in um, Aaron Rodgers because you may as well. Uh, Goofy is starting three Packers right now. so Great observation. Great observation. Yeah, so as, as Goofy goes, maybe so goes Dilly, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'd like to I'd like to say something good about this matchup for Dylan, but you look at Hertz going up against Arizona. That's a freaking smash, you know. I mean, Arizona has got a horrible defense, and Hertz, you know, after a tough week last week, he's going to bounce back big, I think. And, Hertz is going to throw up thirty plus points. And and you mentioned the Green Bay's. You know, he's got the running backs there, and uh, Lazard all going up against the Giants, which is a really good matchup. Um, Goofy does have some tough matchups on there. He did lose uh, Cordero to uh, to IR. Um, Priest Hall and Dobbins are both questionable. So you know, if there's any hope for for Dylan, it's in it's in that 
that section, but uh, he's got some really good matchups that could carry him without the rest of the the roster doing much. So, well, I, I, I think I think Dobbins is uh, questionable just because he had a a smaller practice this, today, uh, because they're still trying to trying to nurse him along, not bring him along too fast, and I think. All has been making some real headway and taking over that backfield over uh, Michael Carter. So we'll see what happens with that. Maybe th- maybe this week is the week where he takes over. Yeah, it's uh, Dobbins was on a pitch count, and he's really he's just at the kind of on the edge of coming back or or still sitting. So they got him in there. Right. He had some good plays, but he's he's still on a pitch count, and they're probably still monitoring it. So. I, I would imagine he plays, but it, you know, anytime you see a cue pop up on somebody, you gotta gotta pay attention to it. I think uh, I'm, I may, I, if I'm him, I may start Brady and and uh, Uncle Lenny going against Atlanta. is a is a good matchup there. He's got Thielen going against Chicago. Um, he's got uh, Damian Harris up against Detroit, so he's got some decent matchups there. But all of these players are these are not top tier players. You know, these are all guys that are, you know, kind of a lot of them, you know, Brady and, and Lenny at the, at the, in the twilight of their careers and Thielen as well. And, you know, Thielen got a little bit dinged up last week, but came in. He doesn't have any designation right now, but I think he kind of tweaked that ankle last week, you know? So if I was uh, the swirly King, I would probably start Robert Woods over Tyler Lockett. Robert Woods has been seeing a lot of targets. He's even seeing targets in the end zone when they get there. Uh, when it's not King Henry running it in, so you might as well uh, play the upside on Woods over a boom bust game for Lockett. It's a, it's a tough call. Lockett's been doing well, but it is New Orleans that they're playing. So. I think he should think about putting James White up there. Kind of a sneaky put. He only retired two months ago, so he's still got something left in the tank, maybe. <laughs> Is he? That was that was the big uh, that was the big getting that one trade, right? That James White, man, that was the that was the prize. That was the prize. Is is is? I'm not looking at his roster. I can pick it up. It is 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 James White still on his roster? Come on. Yeah. Tell me. Huh? Yeah, yeah he is. Is he really? Oh, and 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 he oh, has two oh, open oh. spots on his bench that he has not filled with anything. Because obviously nobody is better than anybody. <laughs> We're not making this up. Oh, and he has OBJ still on the. What team does he play for, Tank Top Mike? Uh, well, I'd part- be holding on to OBJ too. I can't give him shit for that. And the poor yeah, guy. I, I want him poor- to drop it so I can pick his ass up. Gosh, I, I, I had not noticed that James White was still on the roster. <laughs> and, and the poor guy just lost Crowder. Crowder's out on, he's on IR, right? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, Beckham's not on a team. Ah, uh, poor guy, man. Hey, Nuke, Nuke's going to be back pretty soon. That'll do Better it. days ahead. Better days ahead. <laughs> Better days ahead. All right, he's, let's go. He's he's only 37, so, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Better days ahead. So oh, tell me, Swirly King, why do you think you're 0 4? Well, I've really mismanaged the fuck out of this lineup, and uh, <laughs> it's not that great looking down the road. Hopefully, Nuke comes in and really smashes that 40 years old. Yeah, I don't give him much chance against uh, Goofy. He's got Ertz and Connor in there playing New Orleans, and those aren't really good matchups. And again, two older guys that uh, all these guys are like, you know, they're like one foot in a grave. <laughs> so if for some reason you really win this game against Goofy, I will spend five minutes talking all this back and saying, "Silly, how the hell do you do it, man? How the hell do you do it?" <laughs> all right, we've beaten that dead horse long enough. Let's go on to our next matchup, which is Tank Top Mike versus the A Bombers. Honorable this is mention. Be a good- in matchup. Yeah, honorable mention for the Marky Mark matchup. So got the number three versus number five in the league. A bomb's trying to stay in the hunt. Mike, what do you think about your matchup here with A bomb? I, I still have some some thinking to do. I like to put my lineup how I want it to be. 
um, right away. That's why like Swift is in there. Um, so there, there could be some movement still on some of my guys. Um, you know, like Kamara, he practiced um, a little bit, but we'll see what actually pans out with him too. But, um, I mean, really, lineups aside, Aaron and I always have good matchups. I think last year was, yeah. a, was a pretty good one. Um, Ian remembers that matchup well because the um, that was, what, week seven when the Rams went against the Texans. We all know what happened that week. So <laughs> Aaron and I always have some good matchups. I'm excited to do yeah. it again. And he's very graceful in beating me every time. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Doesn't rub it in too much. <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to look at these two teams and see if there's any hope and really the only one that's coming out to me is the Darush, the Deluche. He's got to start Devontae Parker. I mean, he's literally the only other person on his team that start and he had some good targets last week, you know? Unless he's going to start Kyle Phillips and we all know he's not going to do that. So, I think he should start uh Monte Parker and call it a day and hope for the best. I think this is going to come down to who got the stat correction. I think it's going to be that close. Yeah, the Dorch Torch is uh, gone out, I think. I think that's what he get one target last week, so I don't think he's relevant anymore. He was uh, good for a little while, but I think if, if unless Rondell tweaks that hamstring again, then it's going to be uh, it's going to be his that's his role. Um, he does have Allen and then uh, Davis going up against Pitt. Still not sure how healthy Gabriel Davis is, but uh, he's still mm-hmm. not on out there. Evans versus Atlanta, that's a really nice matchup for him. That's another one okay. where – and who else? You know, Brady's kind of said, you know, hey, I, I'm going to throw to the guy that I know, and I think Evans could have a, another big day against uh, Atlanta there. Uh, I do like Tank Top's chances here. He's, you know, Mahomes going up against Las Vegas is a nice one. Diggs against Pittsburgh. Um, Cup versus Dallas is an interesting one. That's It always sucks when, you know, you're wanting your guy to do well, but then he's going up against your team. It's always mixed emotions, you know. And uh, Dallas, the defense has been playing well, so it'll be interesting to see what they come come up with against Cup because that's the guy they got to stop. I think Diggs versus Pittsburgh is a breakout game for Diggs. I think he has a, hey, remember, I'm still really fucking good. <laughs> so, which is kind of counter uh, intuitive, intuitive to uh, the matchup because Josh Allen is on the other side. So it's going to kind of cancel each other out a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll take his points. Yes. I'll take the, I'll take Diggs' points. <laughs> I see you're starting the Colts defense, which is tough. You're, you're neither one of your defenses is a great start this week. So yeah, they both uh, and, and really, yeah, with Indy, it's just that they've kind of they've fallen off for some reason. And uh, last year, you know, I still had confidence in that defense, but this year, it's just the offense isn't doing enough to keep them off the field, and they've had some key injuries and uh, not a not a great. That's a, that's the one thing I we you know. Not like the defense is going to make or break you, but you know, in a close one, it could make a difference here. So, and it, and the Bills defense have been doing pretty well for for A bomb so far. So, it, it, it's funny to think it could come down to that. You know? Could come down to something that that simple. Well, let's move on. We've got uh, the number four matchup here. We got the DBs versus FNG. Now we're okay. Defending- I want to stop. The, I want to stop the show right here. Do we need to talk about this matchup? Like, is this a matchup that we need to even communicate about? Because <laughs> if the DBs are five and zero oh, moving next week, we're all going to want to strangle them. If F and G gets a win, we're all going to want to high five him. And the likelihood of him getting a win over the DBs right now is probably slim and fucking none. So, uh, yeah, that's my take on this matchup right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are an equal opportunity league. I swipe We've right about all on the that teams. take. <laughs> what did you say, Mike? I'm swiping right on that take. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so mean, man. You just like fuck the DBs. I hope they freaking lose to the FNG. Let's go. Well, 
I'm going to talk about FNG a little bit. He's got Sanders and Goddard going up against Arizona. I might have mentioned before that Arizona's got a horrible defense. And uh, that's that's some that's some good matchups right there. I but then it it almost kind of stops there because he's got Curtis Samuel going against Tennessee, which is a good matchup. He's got Godwin versus Atlanta, which is a good matchup. But both those guys are questionable, you know. So I don't know. Godwin I think, on a pitch count. Yeah, yeah. Godwin, I still I I think they have horribly mismanaged him. I don't think he should have been out there in week one. Um, I think if he was, if he was started, if he was coming in this week for the first time, I'd be like, hell yeah, wheels up for Godwin. But man, you know, he's, he's, he's playing too early and I don't know. I, I just just don't like that situation, man. I, I really don't think he should have been in there. So um, I feel a little bit better about Samuel against Tennessee, but we'll have to see if he can hold up too, because Samuel's had a history there. Um, Right now, uh, the DBs have Garrett Wilson starting. You think that's a flex towards F and G? Like that he they don't care. They can play whoever the hell they want. <laughs> yeah, they're going. They're going against Miami, which is, I you know Miami's got a decent defense there. Yeah, I mean this a it's, it's a rising defense. That defense can yeah. sneak up on you. I think. Yeah. What do you think, Tank Top Mike? Yeah, I I mean they talk about Bateman quite a bit, and you know the Ravens are going against Cincinnati. That's not a terrible, terrible matchup for a guy like Bateman. They're going to be slinging that ball out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you think they should put Bateman in, huh? I don't I think they had it's... him in when I looked. Did they? They got him in there now, or? Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackson, you know, playing Cincinnati. Cincinnati's defense is uh, they're they're sneaky good. They they made a step up this year. And um, that's that could be a tough one. CMC going against San Francisco, that's going to be tough right there, man. And, you know, P.S. Baker Mayfield just looks like crap, man. El I mean, Dookie. <laughs> I, I have wanted to still believe in Baker, but, you know, you look at last season, he was playing against one of the best offensive lines in the league. This year, he's, you know, probably mediocre to bad offensive line and he just looks like he knows that he's playing behind a bad line because man he's got he's got the happy feet he's throwing off his back foot a lot he's not stepping into his throws he's getting balls batted down it's just ugly man he should have been Cleveland he 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 played Arizona last week should have been a get right game for him and he was horrible it was just horrible man so I I don't have a lot of confidence in CMC versus San Francisco, and uh, but he does have uh, Hill going against the Jets, Tyree Hill against the Jets, um, and they've got uh, AJ Brown against Arizona. They got some some really good matchups there. I I still don't think FNG gets it done, but you know weirder things have happened. We can we can dream, you know you can't you can't blame a guy for dreaming. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our last matchup of the week. We've got the Hoosier Daddies versus Just the Tips. The big story here is you've got Melvin Gordon versus Mike Boone in the RB2 spot. Mm -hmm. Dang, here we go. Just the running back matchup we all wanted to watch this week. I'm saying, man, (laughs) I'm saying. We all didn't know we could. But now we got it, and we're real happy about it. <laughs> it's 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 almost like playoff football, you know, here in the early season, man. I uh, I just wish I felt better about my chances to win. I, I just it's not been good, man. It's been rough for me. So, what do you guys think? Am I am I being too pessimistic? I think uh, Tank Top Mike said it best when he said this is going to be a real barn burner, <laughs> <laughs> like. How many more games is it going to take for Atlanta to figure out that Kyle Pitts is the best wide receiver and that they should probably throw it to him? Oh, like, they're going the wrong I direction. Mean, they're playing Tampa Bay and good fucking luck, but Kyle Pitts is good. Yeah, his snap count is going down as well. It's trending the wrong direction. So, you think the hamstring had anything to do with that, or or is that a trend from week one till now? Um. Well, I'm. 
was like, yeah. Well, week one to two, it went up, but he he was up to ninety three, and then sixty seven, and now sixty two. Wow. So yeah, but yeah, That's... I think the hamstring. I don't I don't know if it happened when it happened during the game. I guess though. So. Marky Mark is just over here singing, living on a prayer with Neem Hines flex spot over here. Hoping I think that's a good, God that he I think that's a good flex play with Jonathan Taylor out. I think Hines is going to be a good play, actually. 12 points? You think he's going to get more? Plus or minus 12 points? Oh, I mean, I would probably say less than that, but right around there. It's a tough defense. It doesn't, it doesn't feel great doing that against Denver, but uh... – they gotta they gotta trot somebody out there. I think Deion Jackson will probably see some action. I think he's more of the the runner, the more you know, more of the, the typical running back. And Hines, you know, he's just uh you know, I I've been watching him since NC State days, so I've been watching him for a lot of years now, you know. Um he just uh he's he's a decent runner, but he's not a great runner. Um he's a track guy, you know, so he is a lot better out in open space than he is between the tackles, but, um, you know, we've seen him has some big games, so maybe he'll step up and rise to the occasion here. They're probably going to have to be passing, you know? Uh, my first one is if Pittman is playing, I think it's going to be a lot of slants to Pittman and with a little bit of uh, uh, Alec Pierce sprinkled in, and Naheem Hines is going to have the same role out of the backfield catching the ball. And my second point is, are you bold enough to start – People on Thursday night in your flex spot. It's okay. I'll teach you how to manage your lineup. It's fine. Don't put the Thursday players in your flex spot. Let's just let's just start there. Dude, I I realized when I was doing the show sheet <laughs> before I got on with you guys that I hadn't set my lineup. So I just freaking quickly scrambled and got some players in there. So if oh, I could... you're half-assing it this year. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. No, fuck you very Got much. Got it. Fuck you very much, man. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, don't worry. I'll take care of business, man. You take care of yours, I'll take care of mine. So, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I definitely would get... I'll get things fixed up there, but uh, that's kind of what it'll look like. Maybe not in the same order. Okay. I, 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 I don't like Kyler against Philadelphia, but... I don't know what else I'm going to do, man, but put him in there. Um, but Chase, Chase going against Baltimore could be finally my big Chase day I've been waiting for. McLaurin going against Tennessee is a nice matchup. Um, Kittle versus Carolina is a nice matchup. But with both McLaurin and Kittle, you have to wonder how much are they going to utilize them because, you know, it's been down. It's definitely been down for both those guys. So. Um for, for the tips here, you know, they, they've got a couple good matchups with Dubs going up against the Giants. And uh, they got uh, Kirk going against Houston. Otherwise, they got some tough matchups. So I definitely should be able to get some things done this week. But, uh, you know, things haven't been going my way much. So I'm not, uh, I'm not calling my shot. So how many more weeks are you going to wait for Pickett on your taxi? I know he, the next few weeks are probably... Uh downgrade for Pickett, but uh because they played buffalo and tampa after that it seems like he'd be on the upside you think he'd be the guy you'd be looking at to put in for uh murray's week 13 bye week or maybe yeah, i mean with, with with jones injury then yeah I, I might have to play him there so yeah he'll he'll, he'll probably be up if it uh, if, he, if he keeps that job but we'll see what we'll see what happens there he he wasn't great but um, they needed to do I something. Think there's a possibility that they go back to Trubisky. I mean, I don't know. You know, you throw three interceptions and <laughs> kind of have to reassess what you're doing there. So I think the next two weeks are trial by fire. And if they go back to Trubisky, that's going to make the Pittsburgh Steelers look like fucking ass clown. Well, according a, to a pro football focus, um, uh, Pickett was credited with none of those interceptions. If that means oh, okay. anything to you. Two of them were like uh, tips, right? And yeah, there's a Hail Mary in there too. So yeah, he was okay, credited okay. with zero interceptions like that were his fault. I didn't, I didn't know those details. So that's good to know. But uh, yeah, See, it's just. Come to the NAO show, you learn stuff. 
<laughs> not only do we uh, throw shade at everybody and anybody because Tank Top Mike wants to light the world on fire, but you learn some things too. Even you, Marky Mark. Even you. <laughs> I'm usually more up on that stuff, but uh, weird. A little bit of a weird phenomenon going on. I've, I've actually had to do a little work at work, and uh, it's just it's just throwing <laughs> me way off, man. You know, I, I and it, it is kind of egregious. I you know I don't know why they really expect me this time of the year to be putting in that much time at work, but it is what it is, you know? So, <laughs> well, uh, I think I can speak for the rest of the NAO league. And when I say, I'm sorry that your work expects you to do shit during the football season, because that is a grievous and it's outrageous and you shouldn't stand for it. Marky Mark. Yeah. I got to find out what Ian's got going on, man. I got to get, I got to get me an Ian job. <laughs> <laughs> He has he's a wife and two kids in a house, so he's got to work. <laughs> had, had another kid, and he still finds time to do all this shit, man. I don't know. Well, that's the week four in review. Week five, come back next week. Find out that Silly Dilly the Swirl King is 0-5, and, and Goofy put some waxing on that ass. We're going to keep an eye on for the Marky Mark matchup. Let's go, Prince. Ian, you suck!